when a man has done what he considers to be his duty to his people and his country, he can rest in peace. I believe I have made that effort. And that is therefore why I will sleep for the eternity. Africa has seen exemplary and outstanding leaders like South Africa's Nelson Mandela, Julius Nyerere of Tanzania, and Ghana's Jerry Rawlings, revered at home and abroad. There have also been a host of tyrants and despots notorious for their misrule, including Idi Amin of Uganda, Jean Bedel Bokassa of Central African Republic, Mobutu Sese Seko of Zaire, now Democratic Republic of Congo, and Samuel Doe of Liberia. These men are no longer living, but there are also several whom fate has granted the privilege of staying alive to see the results of their rule, misrule, or abuse of power. The case of Africa's one-time youngest head of state is an example. Captain Valentine Stracer was 25 years old when he led a group of fellow young officers to topple the Sierra Leonean president, Joseph Momo, in April 1992. However, Stracer himself was overthrown by members of his own junta four years later in January 1996. Afterwards, he left for the United Kingdom where he studied law at the University of Warwick. He dropped out after a year and eventually returned to Sierra Leone where he is reportedly living in penury. The case of Stracer's national next-door neighbor Charles Taylor of Liberia is probably worse. He is languishing in jail in the UK. Taylor literally shot his way into reckoning after waging an uprising against President Samuel Doe. Although he eventually came to power through elections in August 1997, his fearsome reputation ensured only token opposition. He ruled with a bloody iron fist for six years until forced to resign amid international pressure in 2003. He was eventually convicted of crimes against humanity at the International Criminal Court at The Hague. For South Africa's Jacob Zuma, he might still be a free man but is being dugged as he continues to face criminal charges of fraud, racketeering and money laundering allegedly committed while he was in power. In fact, Zuma is no stranger to the courts as even during his presidency years, he faced a range of charges including rape and corruption. After succeeding Thabo Mbeki in 2009, he was forced to resign in 2018 following a vote of no confidence in parliament. In December 2020, South Africa's Deputy Chief Justice ordered Zuma to resume testifying before the Zondo Commission to answer charges of graft. But it's not entirely gloom for past African leaders as a number of them, including Nigeria's Olusegun Obasanjo, John Kufour of Ghana and Liberia's Ellen Johnson Sirleaf, have evolved into respected statesmen whose wisdom, experience and influence are being tapped both in their home countries and across the continent. If only leaders would remember that there is life after power, perhaps they would do things differently when they are in government, except for those who ultimately desire to reign there for life. Even then, everything has an expiry date, including life itself. Charles Eruka for New Central Television. <laughs>